If you can move, you should be fine, right? Irene, make dinner. After an accident while my husband was driving, I suffered a complex arm fracture. Despite still having my arm in a cast, my husband forcibly discharged me from the hospital, and he callously demanded that I cook. I understand. However, despite my response, my swollen and painful arm continued to worsen. What should I do? I'm even breaking into a sweat. Even if I wanted to seek advice, my husband, who had been drinking, was now loudly snoring. I contacted my mother, who promptly took me to the hospital. Emergency surgery was immediately scheduled. And after that surgery, I passed away. My name is Irene, and I'm 30 years old. I work as a full-time employee while also managing household chores as a housewife. My husband, Thomas, who is two years older than me, and we met through a friend's introduction and got married a year ago. We live a childless life together. Thomas works for a cosmetics company and seems dedicated to his job, but at home, he does nothing. He firmly believes in traditional gender roles, often saying, housework is a woman's job. Growing up, my mother handled all household tasks, so I assumed it was normal. However, I've witnessed his overbearing behavior on several occasions. One such incident occurred when my friend Maria, who couldn't attend our wedding due to work, came to celebrate at our house. I informed Thomas in advance, but unexpectedly, he cancelled his plans and lounged around the house as if it were any other day. I need to clean up before Maria gets here. Can you stay in the bedroom while I do that? His response was far from cooperative. What? Why should I follow your instructions? How I spend my time in my own house is my business. Despite my pleas, he remained glued to the TV, complaining even about the noise from the vacuum cleaner. While he was in the bathroom, I hurriedly cleaned up and managed to finish the preparations by the scheduled time. Then, I welcomed my friend inside. Nice to meet you, Mr. Thomas. I'm Maria, Irene's friend from high school. I apologize for not being able to attend the wedding. Yeah. Despite my friend's greeting, my husband avoided eye contact and responded with a curt attitude, moreover, he accepted Maria's congratulatory gift without saying a word. Hey! Say thank you properly! You can say it. Even the friend couldn't help but smile bitterly at Thomas's words. Apologizing, I felt truly sorry to Maria, who had come all this way. Throughout her visit, he continued to watch TV, even interrupting our conversation to demand coffee. When my husband's phone rang, he left the living room. At that moment, Maria asked me, Hey! Are you okay? Is your husband just being a husband? Does he ever do anything you don't like? Yeah, I'm fine. Sorry for causing you any worry. Maria said, If anything happens, don't hesitate to talk to me. An hour later, after Maria left, I confronted Thomas about his attitude toward my friend. His response shocked me. She's not my guest. I don't need to be considerate. Frustrated, I realized our perspectives were vastly different. Since then, I stopped inviting friends over. Thomas continued to shirk household responsibilities, and my dissatisfaction grew. But I soldiered on, enduring his complaints while managing chores. One day, my husband unusually invited me to go out together, and we set off in the car. It was during this outing that something happened. Thomas spotted a rare car, one of the few in Japan, and became mesmerized by it. Watch out! We're going to crash! 
My husband made an incorrect steering maneuver, and the side of the car where I was sitting collided with the guardrail. The airbags deployed, but I felt sharp pain in my right arm. Someone nearby called an ambulance, and I was rescued from the car and taken to the hospital. While Thomas received a diagnosis of minor bruising, I had a broken right arm and a head injury, so further tests were necessary. As a result, I ended up staying in the hospital for a while. Thomas complained about my hospitalization, saying, Isn't this a bit exaggerated? If it's just a minor injury, can't you go home? His lack of remorse for causing my injury disappointed me once again. When he returned home alone, after about three days, he started bombarding me with messages. How long do you plan to stay in the hospital? The household chores are piling up. Eventually, he even asked the attending physician to let me go home due to household convenience. The doctor agreed, provided I followed strict bed rest at home. Still wearing the cast, my arm hadn't fully healed yet. Returning home after four days, I found chaos inside. Clothes were strewn across the floor, dirty dishes piled up in the kitchen sink, and the trash hadn't been taken out, emitting an unpleasant odor. Thomas demanded that I immediately clean up. But I can only use my left hand. Can't you help me a little? I asked. His response was the same old refrain, housework is a woman's job. He went even further, saying, If you can't even do basic housework, you might as well be dead, like a useless wife. When I suggested asking my mother to help, he objected, claiming, You're going to show your mother that you're a failed wife. I don't think it's good for you. So don't bring your mother home. Despite the pain, I struggled to manage household tasks, but the strain worsened the swelling in my arm. When I informed Thomas, he laughed it off. If you can move, you can cook, right, Irene? I replied, understood, and resumed preparing dinner. However, as time passed, the swelling and pain intensified. To make matters worse, the uncovered part of my arm had turned an ominous shade of red. But Thomas was sound asleep, having consumed alcohol. What am I going to do? It hurts so much I feel faint. I thought that if I went to the hospital while my husband was sleeping and came home again, he wouldn't say anything. I decided to call my mother and ask her to take me to the hospital. Desperate, I decided to call my mother and ask her to take me back to the hospital. The doctor explained that the discoloration was due to the broken bone piercing blood vessels, necessitating emergency surgery. Although the operation was successful, poor blood flow left my right hand partially paralyzed. How did it come to this? I despaired, seeking comfort from my mother. I finally confided in her about the whole situation. Why didn't you tell me sooner? Thomas is beyond terrible. My mother was furious. You also worked and did everything around the house, so I took it for granted. My mother said, That's not true, Irene. You just don't know, but your father helped out with a lot of things too. You're not an incapable wife. Thomas's behavior is excessive. Her words snapped me out of my daze, and I felt a surge of anger and disbelief toward my husband. Mom, I want to get revenge on Thomas using this. I handed her what I had taken out of my bag, leaving her speechless. My mother said, I will help you. She agreed to play her part, and together, we hatched a plan for revenge against my husband. The next morning, I received a call from my husband on my smartphone. Since I was in a private room, I asked my mother, who had been with me, to answer it instead. Hello, Irene. 
Where are you? Dinner isn't cleaned up, and my breakfast isn't prepared. Unaware that he was speaking to his mother-in-law and thinking I was still in the hospital, Thomas continued his usual angry tone. Your wife has passed away. Ignoring his continued shouting, my mother calmly delivered the news. Ha! Huh. What? Wait, who are you? Thomas, can't you recognize my voice? Wait a moment. Oh, mother-in-law? Wait, does that mean Irene really passed away? Surprised by the voice on the other end of the line, Thomas seemed to believe my mother's words. I'd like to discuss what happens next. So would it be all right for your parents to come to the hospital? Uh, understood. About an hour later, my husband and his parents arrived at the hospital. My mother warned them. Don't be too shocked when you see my daughter's appearance. As they entered the room, they saw me lying in bed. Thomas muttered. Why? You were moving around just fine yesterday. My parents-in-laws were equally speechless. Irene, everyone has come to see you. My mother-in-law came running to my mother, who was lying on her face at my bedside, calling my name. My mother-in-law, silently crying, began comforting my mother. Mother-in-law, I'm sorry. Despite my intention to punish my husband, deceiving my parents-in-laws pained me. But there was no other choice. We can't keep grieving forever. We need to decide what to do next. Yes, we should properly bid farewell to Irene. But why did this sudden situation occur? When my father-in-law asked, my mother took a deep breath and began explaining. Well, it seems Thomas did something terrible to my daughter. What? Our son? Hey, Thomas, is this true? Ha! Huh. That can't be. Wait, mother-in-law, what are you saying? Stop making baseless accusations. Thomas's tone grew increasingly aggressive. My mother said, That's not a false accusation. That's what Irene told me. My husband said, Irene's story is not enough proof. Thomas's tone was getting rougher and rougher. Confused, my parents-in-law looked from one person to another. There's evidence, my mother said. The three of them turned toward her, surprised. It seems Thomas did many cruel things to Irene, so there's a lot I want to say. Taking her cue, I slowly sat up, cradling my arm. My disheveled appearance resembled a ghost from a movie. Whoa! A ghost! Wait, did you come back to life? Dad! Mom! Can you see her too? Thomas, on the verge of tears, sought confirmation from his parents, who were too stunned to speak. You're the reason I died. I won't forget what you did to me. I'll never forgive you. I stood up and confronted him. Help, please. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Thomas, crying, clasped his hands together and stumbled backward, collapsing. How pitiful, I murmured. His usual domineering demeanor seemed like a lie. I wanted to continue intimidating him, but Thomas seemed to realize something. Wait, you're alive. You're really alive, right? As soon as he realized the truth, my husband came to me and my mother, saying, You're such an asshole for lying that you died. We never lied to you. Irene even had to have surgery because you pushed her too hard. What the hell did I do? 
Irene. She. Mother burst into tears, pleading hard with Thomas. Thank you, Mom. I'll tell the rest myself, it's okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. You forced me to do housework and my broken bone broke through a blood vessel. I had surgery. I was left paralyzed. Paralysis? But that doesn't mean she's dead. Come on, Dad, Mom, you don't believe this, do you? Husband, while visibly upset, blamed me and sought agreement from his parents. However, both of them remained silent, refusing to respond to Thomas's inquiry. My mother never said I was dead, did she? She said your wife died. So it means the same thing, doesn't it? Instead of arguing, just apologize for lying. Because of the lingering paralysis, I can't perform household chores to your satisfaction, so I'm considered dead as a wife. Besides, you're the one who said it in the first place. He must have felt guilty upon hearing those words. He stopped arguing and fell silent. Dear father-in-law, dear mother-in-law, I apologize for deceiving you. Both of them responded. It's okay. We're glad you're alive. With that, I recounted everything Thomas had put me through to my parents-in-law. My mother-in-law covered her mouth in shock, while my father-in-law glared at his son. But come on, there's no evidence. You can make up stories all day long. Despite Thomas's stubbornness, I confronted him with something. This is the evidence. It was a recording of all the interactions between my husband and me. I pressed the play button in front of everyone. As the voices played, our parents-in-law wore indescribable expressions, and Thomas showed obvious agitation. Isn't it true that household chores are a woman's job? Didn't Dad leave everything to Mom? He sought help from his father in desperation, but he seemed unwilling to speak to his son anymore. Your mindset is completely outdated. With those words, I handed Thomas the divorce papers. What? Divorce over this? Ridiculous. Well, if you're still paralyzed, just do what you can from now on. No, divorce is the only option. Everything you've done, I can share it with everyone at your company. At that moment, Thomas's face changed color. Please, don't do that. Forgive me. He pleaded, looking even more desperate. My husband, who worked for a cosmetics company in a predominantly female workplace, feared the consequences of his outdated behavior toward his wife being exposed. He'd heard about a superior who was demoted for demeaning remarks about women. If you dislike it that much, then don't do such things from the beginning. Apologize properly for everything you've done and reflect. I pushed Thomas away. Although he hung his head in defeat, my father-in-law instructed him to bow and apologize for the first time. Later, our divorce was finalized. I demanded compensation and medical expenses from my husband, totaling $30,000. His parents also cut ties with their son, having squeezed him quite tightly. Unable to do anything besides work, my husband struggled to live alone without any domestic skills. But it was all of his own making. As for me, thanks to post-surgery rehabilitation, my fingers improved significantly. I now live with my parents, attending rehab and working hard. Until the day I can love again, I'll cherish my time alone. How did you find this story? If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to my channel. See you in the next video.